working together, we would get across the finish line. You know, it's easy to beat one person at a time, isn't it? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. I can beat you all day long, one at a time, can't I? All right, all right. But if we pull together, if we pull together and work together and march together and stand together, we can defeat the United States Department of Agriculture, what we call the Lance Plantation. And let me give you a little history on USDA. USDA was the last federal arm to integrate. How many of y'all knew that? When black people came to work at the United States Department of Agriculture, they would not let them in after integration. They filed lawsuits to prevent blacks from working at the last plantation. People, that's why we named it I know. the last plantation, and rightfully so. It has lived up to its creed, it's lived up to its name, the last plantation. And I just want to give a plug out for uh, Brother Leroy here, who's been in the struggle. He getting mad as hell with me, I know, for every, every other year. But I still love him like a brother. Brother Hildebrand, these guys are pioneers too right, no. in the movement. And we go long ways from sit-ins to protests to right over here in 2006, Leroy, where right. we had, we had uh, 18 flags from 18 different states in 2006. So this is not a new struggle. This is a struggle about not just black farmers, but black people in this country. Every black person in this country is only one or two generations away from somebody's farm. Why did we leave the farm? We left the farm because it was a forced occupation. My grandmother used to Right? Our grandfathers worked as sharecroppers and, and slaves, and what did they say? The children grew up, and what, and what did they say? I want to move as far away from here, and I don't never want to come back. Huh? That's right. I ain't gonna never pick no more cotton. I want you to pick cotton, but I want you to pick it with a brand new cotton picker. That's right. Like the white folks pick cotton with. Huh? I want you to till your fields, but I want you to till your fields with a brand new tractor. Like white farmers do. That's right. Huh? Yes. I want you to stop at $50,000. I want you to take part in the U.S. Federal Farm Subsidy Program, right, where we are absent today. Huh? I don't want to take the subsidy table off the table. We don't want to take it off the table. We want to be a part of. When they get a check in the mailbox, I want a check in the mailbox too, Robert. Me too. We, we need one too. Yeah. Why is it that our lady from Fox News was up there? Why do they think? that black farmers don't need operating loans on time. Why does it take 387 days to process, okay, I know I gotta go, 387 <laughs> days to process a black loan? Less than 30 days to process a white farmer's loan. Why is the average farm subsidy payment to white farmers a million dollars to the top 10%? You ought to need one million dollars per farmer. That's a lot of resources, isn't it? Yes, it is. Two hundred dollars to a black farmer. You want to know why? Because it's discrimination. That's all. Right. That's the definition for people who don't know what discrimination. I have to go, but Robert, I love you, brother. Peace be with you. Give him a round of applause, baby. Peace be with you. Take care, John. All right. Take care. I recently hosted a round table in Raleigh, North Carolina, where two North Carolina farmers, Timothy Ward from Goldsboro and Uzell Barnes from Clayton, told their stories. They both were discriminated against by the USDA when they attempted to expand their farms, and eventually they lost their land. They had to give up their land. 4,000 African-American farmers in North Carolina and an estimated 75,000 farmers are still waiting for their settlement. When I came to the Senate, I co-sponsored a bill with my colleague from Iowa, Senator Chuck Grassley, to correct this injustice. And last February, Agricultural Secretary Tom Vilsack reached a $1.15 billion settlement agreement between the federal government and black farmers. This settlement agreement provides once and for all sufficient awards for the farmers that were victims of discrimination.
until this discrimination occurred, it's been proven, there's been a settlement, now we've got to be sure that this settlement gets funded and gets paid to these farmers. Unfortunately, Congress has failed to appropriate this funding on several occasions. For too long, our federal government has failed to live up to its obligations. Senator Landrieu and I will continue to do everything in our power to ensure that Congress provides this necessary funding. And I want you to know that today, Senator Landrieu, Senator Blanche Lincoln from Arkansas, and I, we are introducing standalone legislation to fund right. the Pickford Settlement. to send this language to the president as quickly as possible because our black farmers have waited too long. Let's give another round of applause to Senator Kay Hagan. Yeah. I've been calling on for months. So I want to say thank you. Thank, thank you very you. much. Thank you. And thank her for her leadership uh, in standing up for America's black Amen. farmers. I'd like to introduce another good friend, uh, the chairperson for the Congressional Black Caucus. And uh, I want to say a special thank you to the Congressional Black Caucus for passing and leading not one bill, but two bills for black farmers. One in the tax extenders bill and the other in the war bill. And uh, now we're going to hear from our chairperson, Barbara Lee. Give her a round of applause. All right. Thank you so much. Let me just say, uh, on behalf of the Congressional Black Caucus, our uh, Whip will be here, Mr. Clyburn, very shortly. Congresswoman Sheila Jackson Lee is here with us today. But also Chairman Conyers, Congressman Bishop, uh, Congressman Benny Thompson, Congressman Lewis, Congressman Johnson, Congressman Jesse Jackson Jr. You know all of the members of the Congressional Black Caucus have been on this for so, so many years. We've been working in a variety of ways to make sure that justice is served. But at every turn, the response provided for not funding these claims has been a lack of money available to fund the settlement. Yet, on the other hand, we found the resources to fund two wars that uh, did not need to be funded, or tax cuts for the wealthy. We've seemed to find the money to do all of those. On many occasions during the past year, and thank you, John, for reminding the, the public that we have approved legislation that would fund settling this case. However, these yes. efforts have turned into a brick wall in the Senate, and so thank you again for making sure that we have another shot now, Senator Haney, at, at moving this forward in the Senate. Yes. 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 Another time we're trying, so thank you. Justice uh, deferred, we know, is justice denied. Uh, and as Congress prepares to adjourn for uh, October, this is one item that we hope can no longer uh, afford to ignore. So we hope that the Senate will move on this. The black farmers uh, across our nation have long awaited a fair settlement on this case. Uh, the continued failure to fund the settlement has exacerbated an economic catastrophe for many of these individuals and many of, for many of our farmers. So the, the time is right. The time is right and the time is now. Yes, it is. The yes, time it is. is now, now. Yes. for the United yes. States Senate to pass funding to settle this lawsuit. Yes, it's sir. really uh, basically Yay. the right thing to do. Thank you again. And we heard the chairperson speak about the numbers and one of my good friends, Sheila Jackson Lee, I think I've been by her office so many times, probably thought I was one of her staff at one time. <laughs> All right, but uh, please welcome us. She's going to lead on the issue as well. Thank Sheila you. Jackson Lee. Yay! My chairperson, uh, the Honorable uh, Barbara Lee, uh, Senator Kagan, thank you for being a new senator, a breath of fresh air, a great leader, uh, along with Senator Blanche Lincoln, my dear friend, and of course, uh, Senator Mary Landrieu, another friend, and Farmer Boy, you won't mind me saying a bunch of good women. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> Not a good woman, you know how to good man. I want to uh, take a moment as I'll majority whip comes and I want to also acknowledge Sam Bishop, Benny Thompson, John Lewis, uh, Jesse Jackson. I know my chairwoman has named all of these and there are many others. But bear with me for a moment because I come from Texas and I've walked the walk, traveled through the rural areas of our state and seen farmers scratching out a living and others uh, who are so proud 
And so I want to announce to the American people that slavery has ended. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. That's what the Pickford yeah. decision yeah. is all about. Yeah. about. Slavery has ended. Yeah. If any of you track the history of farmers, whether in North Carolina, maybe uh, even as far reaching as California, certainly in the deep south of South mm -hmm. Carolina, North Carolina, Mississippi, and Georgia, places that I have traveled. Alabama, Alabama, Alabama. and others. Right. I, I know the roll call can be called. Selma. But be reminded of the sharecroppers yes. who after slavery became indentured servants to a certain extent. And then those farmers scratched out an existence that allowed them to buy land. Land that was to be passed on from one generation to another to be able to just do their work, to be able to get those chickens that John Lewis talks about and grow it into a large farm that helps to feed America. That's all they wanted. But if you listen to Shirley Sharon, who tells of the structure of government preceding this government, that even these farmers could not get help from their own Department of Agriculture of years past, they would go to these regions and be rebuffed. They would ask for loans and be rebuffed, while others would go past them and be able to secure that bridge to keep them alive. Mm -hmm. And so a lawsuit that has been settled should be the glaring royal call to justice. Because settlements don't come easy. Settlements are not frivolous. Settlements don't come because you have no substance. Settlements come because after fighting years and years and years, the hands are thrown up and they say, we cannot prevail because they are right. They were discriminated against, they were not able to access the federal funds, and justice did not run down like the mighty righteous war. So today, we applaud the three senators who have offered this standalone bill, and I hope that is a momentum in these waning hours for someone on the Republican side of the Senate to stop being called the party of no and realize that these farmers come with no baggage of being one way or the other, of being pro or con, of pushing politics at all. They simply want to feed America, be part of the food chain that helps the starving in Haiti, that helps to serve the suffering in Pakistan, these farmers are part of the international food chain. Why in God's name can no one discover a reason, a simple reason of fairness to provide them with the resources? My voice is a little rough, uh, but as one would say, I join in the spirit of the members standing here and these farmers and say that slavery has ended. It is time to sign the ink on the settlement and provide, as the senator and the chairwoman has so eloquently said, the $1.5 billion that will keep the doors of these farmers open and the heirs who now suffer in sadness for farmers who died at the plow because they could not get justice in their own country. Knock, knock, the farmers are here. Open the door of justice and give them their $1.5 billion. I am with John Boyd, as president of the Black Farmers Association. Can you explain to us the relationship between land ownership yes. and empowerment in this for the African American community? It is the base for black people, land ownership. Uh, uh, a powerless culture is a landless culture, so if you don't have any land, that means you don't have any power in this country. And um, I said earlier today that we've lost all our, all of our land. How much land have we lost? Uh, we're down from 20 million acres at the turn of the century uh, down to a little over 3 million acres. Just a lot of land and uh, some prime land in, in the South. I don't think we're going to get that land back. Mm -hmm. But um, I'm hopeful that um, if we were able to get this settlement, some of these farmers would be able to buy five acres somewhere in the, in the South. Uh, and I've, at these sessions, I've been urging people, if you can afford a new Mercedes-Benz or a Cadillac, then we should look at buying five acres of land in the country and planting a garden. People planting a garden is farming. That's what that is.